This module is also on demography. It deals with India's demographic features. After studying this module, you will be able to know about India's basic demographic features and also the various policies about population that in Indian economy we are trying to take. Now population and economic development have a two-way relationship. Population is a human resource and adds to the GDP. At the same time, people are also consumers. So people put pressure on the same GDP. So the relationship is both of a producer or contributor to production as well as consumer or people who contribute to production and pressurize the GDP existing. This makes the whole thing a little complicated and therefore appropriate population policies have to be taken to regulate population behavior in any economy. What are the various features of population in India? First we must note that India has a high rate of growth of population following 1921 India has entered into the second stage of demographic transition and has become actually the second most populous country in the world containing 17.5% of the world's population. In fact, in the 60s and 70s, India was often called overpopulated or having population explosion. Since 1960s and 70s, However, there has been a fall in the rate of growth of population. So we may hope that this rate of growth of population may become controllable in the future. Another feature is the density. India occupies 2.8 of the world's land area but supports over 17.5% of the world's population. Rural urban composition is yet another feature. Actually, as Gandhiji said, India lives in her villages, but because of economic growth, a lot of urbanization has been taking place and we find that urbanization of the population has created its own problems. And we now look at rate of growth of population, birth rate, death rate, etc., both from the point of view of the rural areas as well as from the point of view of urban areas. In 2005 to 6, for example, the birth rate was 23.8 per thousand on an all India basis, but for rural areas it was 25.6 and for urban areas 19.1. So in general, therefore, the birth rate is low in urban areas. The death rate, again, the crude death rate in 2005 to 6 was 7.6 per thousand rate of birth rate, death rate, these are always calculated per thousand. This was 7.6 on an all India basis, but 8.1 for rural areas, whereas 6.0 for urban areas. What about the sex composition or gender composition? We find that the proportion of females per thousand males was 962 in 1901, but in 100 years it has fallen to 933. In 2001, it was 933. However, in Kerala, females were 1040 in 1991 per thousand males. So there, the um, proportion is towards the females rather than the males. Age composition shows an interesting feature. Uh, the elderly people are um, having greater life expectation, longevity and so on. Uh, the population above 60 does have a better prospect of living nowadays. However, the young population, the population which can contribute to economic growth, that is increasing and this means that the dependency burden in the Indian economy is reducing. In fact, India can get a demographic dividend that is an extra contribution from the young population towards its GDP. Life expectancy, literacy, all these still require a lot to be 
you know done regarding them the average life expectancy of birth in india was 41.2 in 1951-61 and uh, now it has gone to about 65.5 so it is it is a substantial increase but still you know a lot has to be done regarding it so far as literacy of the population is concerned the level of literacy was only about 18% in 1951 and in 2011 it has increased to 74.04%. Nevertheless, it is still below the world average literacy rate of 84% and of all nations, India has the largest illiterate population, nothing to be very proud of but of course we are improving and there is prospect for improvement in this respect also. The Indian population above all is characterized by diversity. It must be remembered that population is not simply a matter of numbers. We have more than about 2000 ethnic groups, four major families of languages and all the major religious faiths. So India's population is a very diverse population also there are a lot of regional and cultural factors making the problem quite complex in around 1951 right after the census of 1951 which showed rapid population growth it was felt that India should do something about population growth um, in 1952 India became the first country in the world to have an official family planning program although the allocation was not much. By the time we come to the third plan that is 1961-66 a separate department of family planning was created under the Ministry of Health. The fourth and the fifth plans continued to stress population control. In fact the fifth plan which had the objective of Garibi Hatao or poverty er eradication became bound up with population control. During the emergency of 1975-77 there were reports of forced sterilization and consequent public resentment which contributed to a change of political power at the center. Nevertheless the family planning department continued family planning propaganda continued and what we find after 1977 is that it is changing its uh, emphasis slightly and instead of just being concerned with hum do hamare do that kind of an attitude of numbers it is more uh, going towards family welfare in 1977 the Janta government made family planning a completely voluntary program. It wasn't at all um, you know having any compulsory um, elements and so on and renamed the Department of Family Planning as the Department of Family Welfare. It um, removed the compulsion and it removed the setting of targets but in general by that time the consciousness that something has to be done regarding population control was already there in the economy. In 2006 for example the, a national population policy was announced by the government. For example it said that the unmet needs for basic reproductive and child health services needed to be redressed. School education up to age 14 years had to be made free and compulsory. Infant mortality rate had to be reduced to below 30 per thousand. Various other elements were there but the important thing is that in 2006 although it wasn't compulsory or anything a national population policy had been rec recognized to be integral part of economic development. You cannot have economic development without also having a very clear-cut policy towards the rate of growth of population. In 2014 it is being said that the midterm objective of this 
population policy has more or less been achieved. But you know, it's not something that has to be achieved only in terms of numbers. We not only need a population which is under control in numbers, we need a nourished, well nourished population, well educated population with skill, with strength and also strength of mind, confidence and so on. So a lot still has to be done in this respect in terms of introducing education, skill formation, better nutrition and so on. So we cannot really be complacent about it. Nevertheless, it is true that something is being done in this respect. In 1999, Another very important policy change had taken place that is the government of India had adopted a national policy on older persons. The phenomenon of population aging was becoming a major concern for India then and age care has been introduced in India with great sincerity. Senior citizens are given at least better care these days. To summarize, therefore, we find that the population of India right from 1901 then to 1921 and now to 1915 has been progressing not only in terms of numbers but it has changed its character, it's changed its composition and in general we think that because of the dividend that can come from the fast growing young population as a proportion of the working population, it has a lot to contribute to Indian economic development. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about India's basic demographic features, learn what population policies have been followed in India, identify problems with the Indian population, evaluate the population policies followed in India, Analyze future population policies. Let's start with the first feature of India that is in the terms of growth rate. In 1921, following a couple of years of good monsoon and ample harvest, death rate in India came down and the comparatively high birth rate could make its impact felt upon the rate of growth of population. Following this year of the Great Divide, Indian population entered into a phase of growth known as the second stage of demographic transition. Since then, India has become the second most populous country in the world, containing 17.5% of the world's population. Its rate of growth of population is 1.41%, and it has crossed the 1 billion mark in 2000. By 2025, India is likely to be the most populous country in the world, more populous than China. By 2050, India's population may reach 1.6 billion. In the 1960s and 70s, India was often said to have overpopulation or population explosion. Population explosion is a situation in which the number of people living in a country rapidly exceeds its carrying or sustaining capabilities. It is not just the number of people but the ratio of it in connection with the natural or artificial resources at hand that constitutes overpopulation. With the increasing global concern about sustainable growth, Overpopulation or population explosion is a serious issue for individual countries as well as the world. Increase in population is actually a positive aspect of economic growth. Since the industrial revolution in Britain that spread to the rest of the world, most western countries have experienced population growth. Especially after the second world war in developed countries of the West as well as developing countries of East and Southeast Asia, there has been rapid population growth due to the fall in death rate, especially infant mortality rate and increase in life expectancy. 
This has contributed to the global population which may be touching 7.9 to 10.9 billion by 2050. The consequences of increase of global population are unemployment, poverty, undernourishment, lack of education and skill formation, as well as pollution of air and water. At the same time, certain highly developed countries have also experienced a slowing down of the rate of growth of population. Since the 1970s, a slight fall has been observed in India's birth rate, heralding the third stage of demographic transition. Nevertheless, India's population is now 1.21 billion, bigger than the combined population of the US, Indonesia, Brazil, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Density India occupies 2.8% of the world's land area and supports over 17.5% of the world's population. In India, the density of population, that is, the ratio of the number of persons per square kilometer of land area, was 7.7 .7 persons per square kilometers in 1901. By 2001, it has risen to 324 persons per square kilometer. Rural Urban Composition Due to growing industrialization and growing mobility of labor, urban population has gone up from 17% of the total population in 1951 to 25.72% in 1991 and 27.8% in 2011. Rural health indicators are clearly poorer than urban health indicators. In 2005-2006, the crude birth rate was 23.8 per thousand on all India bases, 25.6 for rural areas and 19.1 for urban areas. The crude death rate in 2005-2006 was 7.6 per thousand on an all India basis, 8.1 for rural areas and 6.0 for urban areas. All India infant mortality rate was 58, rural 64 and urban 40. At least 10% more children suffer in rural areas from anemia. Sex composition the proportion of females per thousand males was 962 in 1901 but has fallen to 933 in 2001. However, in Kerala, females were 1040 in 1991 per thousand males. In India, 103 female babies are born for every 100 male babies and loss of female babies after birth is much higher than that of male. The death rates of women are high during the reproductive age group 11 to 19 due to the persistence of early marriages and lack of care. Age composition Age composition or structure is the proportion of labor force in the total population of the country. Any population is usually divided into three age groups 0 to 14 15 to 59 and 60 and above. Populations on 0 to 14 age groups as well as 60 and above is regarded as dependent population. The proportion of population in the 15 to 59 age group was 58% in the 2001 census and projected to rise to 64% by 2021. This would reduce the dependency burden in India and in fact get India a demographic dividend. The average age of Indians would be only 29 in 2020 whereas the average Japanese would be 48, the average American and Chinese 37. Life Expectancy The average life expectancy of birth in India 
was 41.2 years in 1951 to 1961 and increased to 46.4 years in 1961 to 1971. According to WHO data of 2011, total life expectancy in India is 65.5. For males, it is 63.8 and is 67.3 for females. The increase in the life expectancy have become possible due to fall in the infant mortality. Literacy In India, the level of literacy which was only 18.3% in 1951, gradually increased to 23% in 1961 and 34.5% in 1971 and 74.04% in 2011. Even then, the level is well below the world average literacy rate of 84%. And of all nations, India currently has the largest illiterate population. Diversity Indian population is characterized by much diversity. There are more than 2,000 ethnic groups in India, four major families of languages and all the major religious faiths. There is also a lot of regional and cultural diversity. After getting the brief overview about the planning era, let us discuss the population policy in India in detail. Beginning with the introduction of family planning, the census of 1951, the first census after independence, showed rapid population growth. Agricultural growth was however not so good and a food problem began to emerge. As India embarked on a path of planned economic growth, the first five-year plan, 1951 to 1956, called for family limitation and population control. In 1952, India became the first country in the world to have an official family planning program, though the allocation for it was only 0.1 crore in the first plan. The use of various contraceptives began to be advocated and very gradually accepted. The third plan recognized the importance of family planning in economic development and even brought in the idea of voluntary sterilization. During the third plan period, 1961 to 1966, a separate department for family planning was created in 1966 under the Ministry of Health. The fourth and fifth plans continued to stress population control. It became intertwined with the fifth plan's objective of poverty eradication. The population policy of 1976 declared the wait for education and economic development to bring about a drop in fertility is not a practical solution. The very increase in population makes economic development slow and most difficult of achievement. The time factor is so pressing and the population growth so formidable that we have to get out of this vicious circle through a direct assault upon the problem as a national commitment. During the emergency of 1975 to 1977, there were reports of forced sterilization and consequent public resentment which contributed to a change of political power at the center. Emergence of Family Welfare The Janta government of 1977 made family planning completely voluntary and renamed the Department of Family Planning as Department of Family Welfare. Not to speak of compulsion, even the setting of targets and offering of incentives have gone. It may be observed here that in 1978, China began its one-child policy and followed it rigorously. From the 80s, that is, the 6th and 7th plans, family planning became less significant as a program. The emphasis shifted to family welfare programs, promotion of literacy, and general health. India was a signatory 
to the plan of action of the International Conference on Population and Development at Cairo in 1994, which had argued that family planning should be only one component of a nation's population policy and a voluntary approach rather than a control approach should be taken towards it. So henceforth, the government of India introduced the target-free approach 1996, the reproductive and child health program 1997, the community needs assessment approach 1998, and finally, the national population policy 2000. Under the chairmanship of M.S. Swaminathan, government of India reiterated the target-free and consent-based approach. Based on its suggestions, state-level population policies were formulated, example, by Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and Uttar Pradesh. In 2006, a national population policy was announced by the government. Its main points were as follows. Redress the unmet needs of basic reproductive and child health services, supplies and infrastructure, make school education up to age 14 free and compulsory and reduce dropouts at primary and secondary levels to become 20% for both boys and girls, reduce infant mortality rate to below 30 per thousand live births. Reduce maternal mortality ratio to below 100 per 100,000 live births. Achieve universal immunization of children against all vaccine preventable diseases. Promote delayed marriage for girls not earlier than age 18 and preferably after 20 years of age. Achieve 20% institutional deliveries and 100% deliveries by trained persons. Achieve universal access to information, counseling, and services for fertility regularization and contraception with a wide basket of choices. Achieve 100% registration of births, deaths, marriage, and pregnancy. Contain the spread of acquired immune deficiency syndrome and promote greater integration between the management of reproductive trace infection and sexually transmitted infection and the National AIDS Control Organization. Prevent and control communicable diseases. Integrate Indian system of medicine in the provision of reproductive and child health services and in reaching out to households. Promote vigorously the small family norms to achieve replacement levels of TFR. Bring about convergence in implementation of related social sector programs so that family welfare becomes a people-centered program. In 2014, the mid-term objective may be said to have been more or less achieved, but as Sandhya Agarwal had put it in her article, India's National Population Policy 2000 and Evaluation NPP 2000 had a larger mission than achieving replacement levels of total fertility rates but achieving high quality reproductive health care. Except in states like Kerala and Andhra Pradesh, this has not been done yet. The National Commission on Population under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has projected in 2006 that India's rate of growth of population will decelerate from 1.6% in 2001 to 2006 to 0.9% in 2021 to 2026. Policy towards elderly population in India In 1999, the Government of India adopted National Policy on Older Persons. The policy defines senior citizen or elderly as a person who is of age 60 years or above. Aging of population is affected 
due to downward trends in fertility and mortality that is due to low birth rates coupled with long life expectancies in india the size of the elderly population that is persons above the age of 60 years is fast growing although it constituted only 7.4% of total population at the turn of the new millennium for a developing country like india this may pose mounting pressures on various socio economic fronts including pension outlays healthcare expenditures fiscal discipline savings levels etc again this segment of population faces multiple medical and psychological problems there is an emerging need to pay greater attention to aging related issues and to promote holistic policies and programs for dealing with the aging